Hi guys, today we're launching a new series on Philippians where we're coming at you from Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 through 6 and talking about partners in the gospel. Let's hear from the word this morning. Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 through 6 says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrances of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy, because your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Before we begin getting into Philippians, it's important to understand why Paul wrote Philippians and who it was written to. Philippians was written to the church at Philippi, which was probably the first of many churches in Macedonia. In fact, it was probably the church that was started after what happened in Acts 16 with the Philippian jailer. If you recall in that story, Paul, had, Paul and Silas were in Philippi and they were put in prison uh, for preaching the gospel. Yet what happened is there was an earthquake and Paul and Silas were singing praises in the night. And when the jailer came in, they were still there and the jailer had a dramatic conversion uh, in spite of that. And from there, there was a church that was started and it spread out throughout the region inside of Macedonia. And there were other churches that are mentioned, uh, but without names, uh, probably one of the closest of those is Thessalonica. But Philippi is surrounded by that red circle on the map there. And Thessalonians was written to the church of Thessalonica, which is just really uh, a few miles away. In all things, uh, Philippi was a very uh, important church in the region and it was also uh, one that was very dear near and dear to Paul's heart for a lot of reasons. Paul is writing to express gratitude for their financial support in his ministry. The Philippians had been a very generous church and had given many times to Paul in his ministry, but this particular account was thanking them for uh, the financial support that they had sent by way of Epaphroditus. And uh, many things happened to Epaphroditus on his way to deliver that support to Paul. Yet in all of that, he did ultimately gain the support. And then Paul is writing back to express gratitude and also to encourage them in spite of some of the persecution that was happening in that area to Christians uh, for the ministry of the gospel going forth. And Paul is writing this letter at the end of his life, probably because he's facing death. And the salutation mentions Timothy. And uh, later in his life, uh, Paul wrote 2 Timothy, which has many of the same kind of themes that Philippians has concerning death and uh, looking forward to what comes after that and encouraging you know, young Timothy, a pastor at Ephesus, uh, to, to endure in spite of persecution. Similarly, uh, Paul is writing the church at Philippi to, uh, to keep on keeping on and be humble and have a Christ-like attitude, which we'll cover later in later chapters. But today we're going to focus in on this idea of being a partner in the gospel. A partner in the gospel is generally one that has a role in the gospel ministry. And typically a partnership it requires at least two parties. You can have more than that. But here we really see the two parties as being the Philippian Christians and the Apostle Paul. And these two uh, entities, it's really two uh, groups of people, had formed a partnership for advancing the gospel wherever Paul went to share, and, and they weren't necessarily the ones going, but Paul was the one that was going. But these, they were very involved in that ministry for a lot of reasons, but one of them being that they were giving to Paul and probably praying for him and also supporting him in other ways that we, we really don't know about, but yet Paul's affection for this church really just seemed to indicate that they were intimately involved in his ministry in more ways than, uh, than one. Uh, but we do really get to see a glimpse of that in the book of Philippians. As we go through it, you'll see how Paul really relates to these Christians in Philippi and has a deep affection because of that. Also, 
when we think about partnerships in the gospel, there are really two roles. There are goers. These are the ones who take the gospel where it has not been preached. And in the context of Philippians, that goer was Paul or Paul and Timothy or Paul and one of his other companions. Wherever Paul went, he almost always had someone to go with him. But in this case, uh, he starts the the book with by mentioning Timothy. And the goers here are the ones that are going about the work of taking the gospel into new cities and new countries and new regions and new territories where it previously hasn't gone before. And the senders are the ones who support this effort in advancing the gospel where it hasn't gone before. In the context of Philippians, the Philippians at one point were not saved, but yet they be, they they heard the gospel and as a result became very involved in wanting others to hear that gospel. And this pattern is seen, seen throughout history and even in today's uh, context. We have goers and senders in our churches as well. We have goers who would be our, our missionaries and evangelists who preach the gospel to those who haven't heard. And we have the senders. And these would be those who are in, in the churches that are financially supporting the goers and praying for them and partnering with them and helping them advance that ministry. And at some point, some of the senders might become goers themselves. And sometimes the goers might become the senders themselves, depending on the context. In all cases, at some point in your Christian life, you are likely to be one or the other. So it's really not a question of being a goer or a sender. It's which of these am I at this time? Because regardless of where you're at in your Christian ministry, you're either one or the other, or maybe even both at the same time in some cases. So the question I have for you today is, which are you right now? Are you a goer? Are you a sender? Are you both? Regardless of what you are, let it be your prayer today that, Lord, help me to be a partner in the gospel as a goer and a sender. And think about those who are supporting you in your ministry and also think about those who you are supporting as they go to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Are you being edified by the devotions here on Abide? At Abide, we will never ask you for financial support, but you can support this ministry by simply subscribing to this channel and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new devotions are posted. You can also follow us online on Twitter at AbideDevo. And as always, you can share this content with your friends and family if you think they will benefit from it. Until next time, thanks and God bless.